Story time! Okay, so when I was in school one day, it was lunchtime. I was sitting at the table with all of my friends, but then I had to use the bathroom. And to leave the cafeteria, you have to ask one of the lunch monitors. Now, most of the time, I didn't even have to use the bathroom in the first place. I was just bored and trying to leave the cafeteria. So the lunch monitors let me go, and it was about a two-minute walk from the cafeteria to the bathrooms in my school. My school had two floors, and there were three different stairwells on the second floor where I was. So I started walking, and I was about halfway to the bathroom when all of a sudden, the code red alarm went off. This code meant that there was an intruder in the building. The lights in the hallway shut off, and I couldn't see anything but a faint light coming from the cafeteria. There there were no windows or anything, so it was pitch black. That's when I ran to the cafeteria and I tried opening the doors, but they were locked. So then I tried running through the hallways to see if I could open one of the classroom doors, but since it was lunchtime, most of the teachers leave the school and lock their doors until they get back. So I started running in the dark and I ran into a set of lockers and I fell. And I could tell I was bleeding, but that didn't matter because I didn't know if the school intruder had come up the stairs yet. So then I saw an XA sign glowing in red. And I knew that it was right next to one of the stairwells, so I ran towards it and turned the corner. And I also knew that the bathrooms were down this hall. I found the bathroom and went inside. And the bathroom doors couldn't be locked in my school, so all I could do was get into a stall and lock myself in there. As I was in the stall, I heard another stall opening behind me. And I remember to myself like this is it i'm gonna die but then a flashlight came on and turns out that it was another girl from a grade above mine she said hey like did you see anyone outside and i was like no i didn't see anyone that's when she went into a separate stall and locked herself there now in my school we weren't allowed to have phones but i would always bring mine just in case of situations like these i was about to text my family when all of a sudden the lights came back on so i opened the stall and i opened the door to the bathroom i looked outside and the hall lights were on and then that's when i could see my friends coming down the halls looking for me i came out and i was like where's the intruder and my friend was like there wasn't an intruder it was just a drill i literally thought i was going to die that's when my friend carlos dragged me down the stairwell and he was like are you okay and i was like yeah i'm fine he then pointed to my elbows that were all scratched up and bleeding from me bumping into the walls and falling we both went to the nurse's office and he waited for the nurse to give me some ice and then she had to wrap my elbows turns out i had a gash on my leg too we walked back to class and then he asked where i was because he got worried because they couldn't see me in the cafeteria i then told him the whole situation and he started laughing but at least it was just a drill and not something serious i don't even know where to start I'm literally still so flustered and shaken up. Yesterday, I was in TJ Maxx, and I was by the lighting section, and I get these weird intuitions that are like, get away from the section. Like, I kept telling me to get away from the section. And so I walked away, and not even 10 seconds later, these kids come running in, literally light fireworks off in the back of TJ Maxx. This is by all the lighting and whatnot, so it literally goes up in flames and blows up. It sounded like gunshots. Everybody hits the floor, especially with everything going on in the world right now. People were freaking out, running out of the store, trampling each other. The lady was on the microphone saying, everybody get out of the store right now. We didn't know if the place was gonna go up in flames. I left my entire cart and literally bolted out of the store. I got to my car, the parking lot was a flipping disaster i'm shaking at this point i don't even know what to do can't function it's like this world is so messed up and crazy right now like i hear about all this stuff on the news and then you actually go through it and like i you can't even put words to this situation it's like yeah these kids thought they were trying to be funny or whatever or they wanted the adrenaline rush but they didn't realize how much damage they did and the fact that they literally could have killed somebody I don't know what happened. I got out of there. At the same time, this poor dad was running around trying to find his little son because he couldn't find his son. He was running around TJ Maxx crying and screaming. I felt so bad for these workers who couldn't even leave. And these kids literally ran past me and got away. The only reason I knew it was fireworks because as I was running out, the people who were literally right next to him said that these kids let off fireworks in the back of the store. Like, what is this world? Why? What were they trying to get out of this? I'm telling you guys this because I never thought going out and shopping alone would be something that literally puts my life in danger. It's like the fact that I have to look over my shoulder feeling like somebody's going to do something or I'm going to be in harm's way. It's just so sad. And not to mention that I had a damn good cart of TJ Maxx stuff that I was ready to buy. <sighs> be safe out there. I, I have no words. Okay. Love you guys. Bye. I just unlocked a crazy story from my salon days. So working in the salon, there's obviously a lot of women who come in to get their makeup done. And they're always trying to poach you for somebody. So we've got a client that I'm doing and we start conversation. She starts asking about me and like really trying to get to know me. And then she tells me that she has a brother-in-law who is single. And that like literally we'd be perfect together. So I tell her, you know, like, sorry, I have a boyfriend. And like, I'm just not interested. She tells me all these things, how we'd be great sister-in-laws together. Her mother-in-law is fabulous. And I tell her like, look, I'm just not interested. Like I was dating my boyfriend. She goes home and tells her mother-in-law about me and how like I'm such a great girl, I'm so cute, like whatever, all this stuff for her son. And then we get a phone call. The mother-in-law wants to book an appointment with me. She comes to get her makeup done because she has an event, but she's also like heavily vetting me out. And I'm over here like, Miss Ma'am, you are not here for your 30 year old, 30 plus year old son, who isn't ugly by the way. She sits down to get her makeup done and then she asks me if I can make coffee for her. Now I want you guys to keep in mind, this isn't like I'm pouring just pre-made coffee like American coffee. This is like I have to like actually make it on the stove myself. It's a whole thing culturally. So now I have to stop my work and I have to offer it to like multiple people only because she wants to see how I make coffee and how good I am at being submissive.
it's a whole strategy guys okay anyway so i start doing her makeup and she is insanely picky by the way and she starts trying to talk to me about my personal life like who i'm dating and all this stuff and i just kindly tell her like oh i you know i have a boyfriend we are long distance and she's like oh you're long distance well he's not here you should give my son a chance and i'm like no i'm loyal i'm loyal to my man she leaves really disappointed that she can't snatch me up but wait i find out during that same week she also went to go to poach somebody else that i know like in my inner circle i found out from my mom and they actually started dating for like a little bit a year later it's her son's wedding she found a cutesy little submissive girl for her <laughs> and guess is doing the makeup for the wedding so i go to the house for the wedding and i'm obviously professional and i'm just like i hope she doesn't make it awkward i go to her house i see her son that she's like vetting for i see the future wife and they're like really cute and then oh how could i forget while i'm doing her makeup she's telling me about how her son was in love with this other girl but she just didn't approve she didn't want it so she literally did anything in her will to break them up and she did she books me for two weeks out for another event that they have and i go to their house two weeks later i get there and she insists that i have coffee with her her son and the new wife let me know if you want to know what happens next hello i don't expect so many people to be so invested but here's part two. So she books me out two weeks later, post-wedding for another event they have. You guys know, when she came to approach me to ask me to date her son, she made me make her coffee. So clearly, coffee is a big deal in my culture. Now, on the wedding day, she insisted that I have coffee with her, but I'm like, ma'am, it's the wedding. Like, you gotta go, I gotta go, I have clients, you know? She was really upset about this. So when I walked in two weeks later for the makeup, she was, the first thing she said is, you have to have coffee with us today. Now, I don't drink coffee. I don't drink American coffee. But if you know, like, our coffee is very strong. So I hate it. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I don't want to be an inconvenience. And she's like, no, if you don't have coffee with us, I will be so upset. So we finish and we go to have coffee. She calls a new wife over and she says, can you please make us all coffee? Now, in the kitchen is her husband, her son, herself, and the daughter-in-law, the new wife. It's so awkward. What am I supposed to talk about with these people? It's like eight in the morning. So to make small talk, I'm like, how was the wedding, you know? And before anyone can answer, she's like, oh, it was a dream. It was everything that I wanted. I'm looking at the new wife like, was this what she wanted though? And I'm like, oh, you know, like, I'm so happy that you guys had fun. She's like, no, if the wedding didn't go exactly how I wanted, I would have thrown a fit. I'm like, I believe you, girl. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to get out of here. But you know, it takes forever to drink that stupid coffee. And then, as if things couldn't get worse and more awkward, she turns to her husband and she says, you know how I found Mary? I'm like, oh no. Funny story. I actually approached her because I really wanted her to date our son. And I'm like, mm -hmm, you know, drinking this coffee that I don't even like. And it's so awkward. You could like feel the awkward tension because like, what are you supposed to say? And the new wife like looks at me and she smiles. She's like very sweet, very modest. And she starts complimenting me. I think you're so beautiful. You're so smart. You are so kind, like just on and on and on. Not one nice thing about the new wife. Oh my God, that's when I just downed my coffee and I was like, oh my God, thank you guys so much. I really like have to go to my other clients. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Bye. If you guys want more stories, I have a ton.